In this tutorial, I'll show you how to tame your thick paint shadows. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Quirrell Painter Master Aaron Rutten, and it is my mission to help artists like you enjoy digital art and learn some new skills along the way. Today I'm going to be answering a question from one of the artists who supports my work at patreon.com slash Aaron Rutten. Carolyn wants to know why are there jagged black edges when I use thick paint? Unfortunately, that's just how thick paint works. It's supposed to simulate the shadow cast by paint elevated up off of the canvas. If I zoom in closer to this, then you can see that there's kind of a jagged black edge. Now sometimes you might want that and other times you might not. For example, in this painting here, if I paint a little bit here, it looks kind of out of place along that edge. And that's because the light source in this image should be coming from the top right. So the shadow should not be on the right side. You can edit the angle of the shadows if you go to Canvas, Surface Lighting, and we can see that the light is right over here on the top left. We just need to drag that over to the top right. Now you can click on Simple Lighting, sometimes that makes things easier if you want to get that exact position. And you have to be careful because when you play with the lighting, you're controlling the lighting across your entire piece. So I would highly advise setting the lighting before you start your painting, not after. I'm going to go ahead and just set my light to go from the top down here but it still leaves a little bit of that black edge, so you can increase or decrease the shadow strength, but that just increases or decreases the paint body or the thickness of the paint. Another thing that you can do is you can double click next to the thick paint layer and you can reduce the thickness or the amount. That'll flatten out the paint and that makes that edge a little less pronounced. You can also go to edit preferences and you can control that default amount here. So if you find that thick paint is just too thick for your liking, you can decrease this default amount. I'm going to go ahead and set this back to about 100%. And I'm going to move on over to the background here. And one of the issues with thick paint that bothers me the most is that if I sample a color back here, create a new thick paint layer, and I start painting, then although that background color matches, and it's the correct background color, the thick paint shadows are a little bit too strong. So I would, of course, want to back that down a bit and now it blends in much better. But if I create a new thick paint layer, and I start painting in the background, and I build up some thick paint, and I forget to change that paint thickness, and then I do something like I merge my layers down, and then I go to blend using one of these blenders here, then that thick paint shadow essentially turns into black paint. And so it muddies up my color when I go in to blend it, and you can see it adds that gray tint to it. If I blend the paint that's a little more flat, it's not quite as noticeable, but it still does add in a little bit of black paint. So what I would recommend doing in this case is I'll go ahead and create a new thick paint layer. I'll go ahead and put down some paint over here. I'm gonna go ahead and reduce the amount down to zero. I'm gonna right click on that thick paint layer. I'm gonna convert it to a default layer. I'm gonna right click on it again and I'm going to duplicate it. And on that bottom most duplicate, I'll call that shadow. The topmost one I'll call it paint, and I'll just rename that bottom layer so that I know what it is. So on the shadow layer, I'm going to select the layer adjuster tool, then I'm going to hit the down arrow a couple times, I'm going to set the composite method to multiply, and then I can click up here on the opacity, and I can reduce the opacity. And what this does is this gives me a shadow, but it gives me a little bit more control over the color and the distance of the shadow, and then if I decide later that I want to merge this paint down, I could just remove that shadow merge the paint and blend, or if I decided I want to keep it, I can keep it. Now, of course, you can use the arrow keys to move that shadow down farther, or you can move it closer so the paint's not quite as thick. If the shadow's too sharp, then you can select something like the Blur Blender and just paint over it with the Blur Blender. That'll soften it out. Now, I know this is a bit more tedious and time-consuming than just having the shadow appear automatically, but I'm just giving you some options here to work with. The advantage of doing it this way now is if we blend that paint and the shadow down with the artwork underneath and we blend, then even if we accidentally blend in that shadow, the shadow color at least matches the background. It has that purplish hue to it. It remains a little bit more saturated and just fits in better than this more neutral color over here, which looks kind of muddy and kind of out of place. I'm gonna go ahead and do some undos and go back to before merging those layers. You can also go back to that shadow layer, turn on preserve transparency. I'm going to select the airbrush. And in some cases, you might want your shadows to be maybe cooler. So I could paint over this with a blue. Go ahead and just do a really bright blue so you can see an extreme example of that. 
Maybe the shadows that are off in the distance are more blue like that. Now if I go ahead and merge those layers down, and I do a little bit of blending, again that blue blends a lot more naturally with the background than it would if it were black. So those are some tips for teaming curl painters, thick paint shadows. Thick paint is still a relatively new technology, so there's definitely some room for improvement. If you found this tutorial helpful, go on over to patreon.com slash Aaron Rutten and join me on my mission to create more free digital art resources like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.